Welcome to iLecture Online and here we're going to look at self inductance, the inductance caused by coil onto itself. And I just noticed I'm missing a T here. Kern needs a T at the end. All right, so let's read our example. It says here that at a given instant, the current through a coil with 500 turns is increasing at 0.25 amps per second or a quarter amp per second. At this time, the magnitude of the induced EMF is 0.4 volts. A. What is the self inductance? And B, what is the average magnetic flux through each turn when the current is equal to one and a half amps? All right, so let's draw a picture of that, get a feel for it. So let's say we have a coil, there's a coil, and the coil has a number of turns. So N is equal to 500 turns. There's a current flowing through the wire and the current is also changing. So for part A, we're dealing with a changing current. So the di dt is equal to 0 0.25 amps per second. Okay. And they tell us that when this is happening, the EMF is 0.4 volts. So the EMF induced, E induced, is equal to 0 0.40 volts. And that is the magnitude of the EMF, because typically the, magnet, the EMF is the negative of the um, self-inductance times the change in the current. So let's write down that equation. So we normally say that the, in, the EMF induced by itself is equal to the negative self-inductance times the change in the current over time. But since we're looking for the magnitude, we can go ahead and get rid of the negative sign right there. All right, so self-inductance is what we're looking for. So for part A, we're looking for self-inductance. So let's put a little circle around here. That's what we're looking for. And so let's solve that equation for the self-inductance. L is used for self-inductance. I don't know why, but it is, so let's use it. So L is equal to the EMF induced, the magnitude of that, divided by the di dt, the change in the current to the loop per unit time. And uh, we're given that the EMF is 0 0.04 volts. Oh, now too many zeros there. It's 0 0.40 volts, 4 tenths of a volt, divided by the change in the current, and that's given to us as 0 0.25 amps per second. And so let's find the self-inductance of that. So 0.4 divided by 0.25, and that is equal to 16 Henry's. And you may wonder why we use the term Henry's. Henry was one of the physicists, an American physicist in this case, that actually helped in discovering the importance of the inductance between coils. So we named the unit of inductance after Henry. Uh, that doesn't look right. 0.4 volts. Ah, I'm missing the dot in there. See, my eyesight is not so good anymore, and I can barely make out the little dot between the 1 and the 6. So, hmm. That looks a lot better. When I did a quick check, I said mm, 0.4 divided by 0.25 cannot be 16. It's actually 1.6. All right, so we found the self-inductance. Now, what is the average magnetic flux through each turn when the current is equal to 1.5 amps? So we need an equation that determines the relationship between the self-inductance and the number of turns, the current, and so forth. And so if I remember right, the self-inductance is equal to the number of turns times the flux divided by the current in the coil. So let's do that. So the self-inductance is uh, 400. Uh, let's see, do we have 400 turns? No, 500 turns, so 500 turns, times the flux through the, um, hmm. Well, actually, what we're trying to find out is we are given the flux, we have the number of turns, we have the current, we're actually looking for the flux through the coil. It always helps to figure out what we're looking for before we go ahead, barge ahead, and try to solve the problem. So since we're looking for the flux, I have to solve the equation for the flux. So let's do that first. So multiply both sides by the current, divide both sides by N. So we have the flux through the coil is equal to the self-inductance times the current divided by the number of loops. And so the self-inductance we find out to be 1.6 Henry's. Then we multiply the times the current. The current at that moment is 1.5 amps. Go, and then we divide the whole thing by the number of loops, the number of turns, which is 500. 
and it turns out that Henry's times amps is Weber's, that's the unit for the flux, so 1.6 times 1.5, 2.4 divided by 500, and we get 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3 Weber's, 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3 Weber's. Weber's is a unit of flux, and if you kind of wonder what the unit, where the unit came from. So we know that the flux can be defined as the product of the magnetic field times the cross-sectional area. The units for magnetic field, and I'll put it in brackets, indicate that these are now units. The units for magnetic field is Teslas, and the unit for um, area is square meters. So it turns out that Tesla times square meters is indeed Weber's, and that's what we write. So that's the flux going through the loop, the average flux per coil, and um, the self-inductance is 1.6 Henry's, and that's how you do a problem like this.